we are getting into series number two of our round robin tournament. I'm very excited here. Yes, yeah, certainly so. And this is only the second of six games. Six games? I believe six so. Six games. Yeah. Six games that we're going to have tonight. The first one was a 2 0 to Navi over Team Kick. As now Navi look to play again here. Up against Team Acer as we are now into the game. On to Cursed Hollow. It was the first map last time. It's the first map this time round. As on the left-hand side, we have Na'Vi themselves. Natus Vincere, Etherno on Sylvanas, Cilium on Valor, Splendor on the Brightwing, No Skin, Water, Scrubnub, Schwimpy on Tarande, and Breeze playing Diablo. The blue master skin Diablo, in fact, lovely little thing. And on the right-hand side, in the red trunks, it is going to be Team Acer. And starting in the top lane, it is going to be Blow Five, Your Brain four, on the Illidan. Three, in the mid lane, two, it is Zypho one, on the Tassadar. In the bot lane, fight. it is going to be Drakir on the Ufa. Nasty is on the Master Skin Sergeant Hammer. And BKB is on the ETC. So, yeah, BKB, uh, is, play BKB is playing the tank. Yeah, I was going to say, he was uh, hovering over the Illidan in the pre-match thing. Did it make too much sense to me? But well, it does look like we're going to have Breeze and Schwimpy as the Rome squad, as expected here. So much CC will come yeah, out of these they're two. Ready. Uh, there's the Oracle, so they're not yep. going to get the early Tassadar pick. And uh, that's the wrong lane to gank, to be fair. Looks like they're circling around, and they're going to think about maybe going at it from a different angle, or maybe heading to the top lane. It looks like top lane is going to be the order of the day for them. In the meantime, interesting pathing here out of uh, Acer, placing hammer mines everywhere and roaming very high up. Probably going to see, trying to see if they could uh, spot out Shrimpy and Breeze and catch them out, but they're just hiding in the spot lane right now, and someone's taking a scouting drone. Who took that? Right wing. Yep, okay, fair enough. So yeah. not choosing to avoid the bribe and the extra damage, instead taking the scouting drone for, well, scouting. Brightwing taking the role of Teemo here, scouting the head. They do not blow your brain off the mount. Splendor, though, just more or less baiting this one. Trying to get Blow Your Brain to go aggressive on him, because right now, look at this free damage, down to about three quarters free HP. free damage, and he's zoning Blow Your Brain yeah. away from the XP very effectively here. There's the evasion, forcing him to back out. So if they just chill here, not going to have too much trouble, other than the fact that he's thermal. Although he's doing an okay job of clearing the wave, the waves are still pushing up to his tower and sapping out that, that ammo. Yep. As in this top lane, we see Breeze going in, but Blow Your Brain Too just going to jump straight out of that one. Yep, just needed to be a little bit more patient. They weren't exactly losing anything there, because we can see they're still a little bit ahead on XP on Na'Vi. But even so, Splendor now, he knows that he can just play aggressive like this. And even if Blow Your Brain goes in on him, uh, he can just A, use his E and get out. But Blow Your Brain still has so much pressure on here, thinking that Tarande and Diablo are here. If Splendor just keeps going aggressive onto Blow Your Brain, he has to play so, so passive oh, because the lane. threat is always there. Ephermal going a bit aggressive onto Nasty. In comes Breeze. There's the stun combo. Boost is active, but it's not enough. Down goes Nasty in that bottom lane. And that is going to be first blood just in time for the tribute in favor of Na'Vi. And they're going to start hitting the that Breeze going aggressive again. It's not over. They're onto BKB. The poison is down, but there's the last second heal. And BKB able to escape, but that is huge domination in favor of Na'Vi for this tribute. They're now on their way up to try and take it. But the difference is Hammer's actually going to get there before them because they spent so much time in that bot lane that she's been able to respawn and then roll her way up to this top lane. Breeze and Cilium are here, however, blow your brain again, very low. Obviously, we saw him before, can't tap. Oh, he's Nasty low. Getting chucked in. Look at the body block coming in, and there it is. Hammer going down again here. Zypher now is taking some damage uh, from Schwimpy here. But nothing really coming of it. Blow your brain, though, still very low. Nice healing ward placed here in the back by Schwimpy as Tasta now doing what Tasta does best and just denying this. Yeah, but Breeze going to go aggressive onto him, not looking for a kill here, just looking to try and hold Zypho back to give him time to grab this tribute, and it should be enough this time. Cilium finally going to be able to pick that up, and that is the first tribute of the game, and the first kills of the game going over to Team Na'Vi. In the spot lane, Eternal still one versus one. Actually forcing BKB out is very low. And of course, Eternal, when in a 1v1 lane, can just push down the he tower. Has the venom. So Immediately well. pops the Venom. Second, be oh, it hit him. The Banshee Well did actually hit BKB. And BKB having to be, he's so low now. Oh, ow! Oh! Yes! <laughs> 
the owl lands on BKB. So unlucky there, but the Hail Mary owl from Shrimpy, you've got to love it when that happens. It's such a wee, a wimpy ability, but it's so good to see someone die to it. It's one of my favourite things in this game. Oh my god, right. I did that thing again. You did that thing again. Yep, where ads were still playing. Oh dear, well done. Yep. All right, so we're going to see Ethermal just clearing up this bottom lane for now as he can do. BKB now at full health. It's going to go a bit more aggressive onto him and force him out of the lane a bit, but Ethermal just out micro him. Second tribute spawning in this top lane. Nasty's been busy in this top lane, just dealing as much damage to those towers as, as he can, as but gets polymorphed out of siege mode and is going to roll down and try and help take this. Uh, oh. Hang on, nope, we're going to see Brightwing get stunned out, but is able to boost her way out. Sylvanas goes down, though, in the bot lane. Good job, BKB. Yeah, Zypher had to use the dimensional shift to get that one, but he won't mind that one too much. Breeze trying to get in here. Shwimpy did get the tribute, even if they were still three versus four in that top lane, I think it was. But we had Cilium just still pushing out this mid lane. He eagerly wants this tower, and he's going to get it. Yep, tower goes down. Zypho did drop a shield. There's not going to be enough to def to defend it. Having a look at some of the talents, fairly standard stuff out of everyone other than the slight uh, unordinary stuff like the scouting drone that we see in Venom on the Sylvanas is fairly usual and has been used to great effect so far. Gust of Healing, standard out of Brightwing. Pretty, yeah, pretty standard out of everyone. Exactly right as now. Going into that period where it's, there's just been a tribute, teams just fall back to their lanes and just farm up Eternal, though. So much burst onto Nasty there and is going to get out of there. BKB tried his best, but didn't interrupt it. Nasty, though, back to full HP, and now Eternal really can't do anything in this lane. Cilium has come down. Tribute has spawned as well. It's on this bottom lane, which yep. is extremely good for Na'Vi, as they do have this bright wing in the top lane. They've just hit 10. Blow Your Brain has to base as well. So Splendor's going to get a ton of XP, especially... If Na'Vi can just delay this tribute, or even just take it for themselves and get that get that curse. Yeah, and they're looking to try it and take it. Shrimpy started that. Tastar was thinking about Got coming it. down, but is nowhere near in time, and that is going to be the first curse. Tastar not even starting to come down to try and deny there, which is a little weird. But Na'Vi going to use this opportunity of the first curse to grab control of the first boss of the game. In the meantime, blow your brain. Still just being harassed by Brightwing. Brightwing just doing so much right now against this Illidan. Such a strong lane counter as well. As there it is. Just pushing down these towers. That's one. Going to get a second hit. Blow your brain trying to go on to Splendor here. But taking so much damage. Gets polyed as well. And that really just doesn't help things for him. Yeah, but he's, he's, he keeps going aggressive on to Splendor. But Splendor just out microing him. Staying near his uh, staying near his minions. It's just doing so much dam counter damage. Blow your brain, though. He's trying his best. He is clearing up the waves well enough, but it's just getting out harassed. Middle four going down to Na'Vi there. And both teams do have their heroic abilities, though. So if uh, if Acer did want to fight, they're going to have to start doing it soon in order to try and make their comeback. Breeze starting off with that second boss for Na'Vi. There's the vulnerable from the Hunter's Mark. And we're going to see Na'Vi attempt to take this, and it doesn't look like they're going to so face the any contestion. Ends. Oh, no, they are not the only... Oh, Illidan spots it, but obviously can't match He's a bit late. He going is gonna. It's the stage dive. That's well. gonna be it. BKB's gonna get this boss. They can't get onto it. Breeze is gonna flip, blow your brain back, but he does get the Divine Shield. Splendor now having to use the Emerald Wind to back out of that one. BKB is silenced, as is Draka. They're gonna try and get onto BKB here, but they do land the stun. Very nice, nice cleanse coming out from Draka. Yeah, and they're actually well. going to be able to get away, and the boss, stolen by Acer, has already taken down a tower and is doing huge damage. Navi just going to have to having to turn around and deal with this boss, and that was a great fight there by Team Acer, and has put them pretty much back into this game at this point. And there it is. Boss has fallen now, but they have gained a level. Na'Vi about to hit 13 and have that talent advantage. They could, if they wanted, try and make an aggressive play for the hard camp here with this talent advantage in such confined space as well. They do still have the APOC up. They're going to have Strafe available soon as well. They could go and contest this if they wanted, but that's going to get taken away by Acer themselves. Yep, Acer going to be taking out this Bruiser camp very quickly. 
And now that Na'Vi are level 13, we're going to see their healing go off the chart. Brightwing's already at basically maximum healing potential, but now Tarande has hit her level 13 talent, the Overflowing Light. So she's also going to be dropping huge heals to keep her team alive. And of course, Diablo is running that Amplified Healing talent, so it's just going to be tanking all kinds of stuff with the help of those heals and the healing ward. And... Now this bot lane, we do have the siege camp here pushing down, but even so, it's not going to do too much, which is why we still have four members here. ETC, of course, still in the top wow. lane. Breeze trying to go onto Zypher there, but can't, as uh, using the dimensional shift to get out of that one. Yep, very, back very away. nice there. Zypho and the rest of uh, Aesir, like you said, backing away, heading to the mid lane, where Cilium is maybe looking to catch Cilium, but they're coming in from the wrong angle if they do want to engage. Instead, just going to be clearing the wave. Or attempting to, but now the rest of Na'Vi is here, so that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, that one won't go, won't happen just yet. They do have a lot of long-range clear, though, in the Napalm, the Hammer Auto Attacks, and the Tacitus Ice Storms. It is tribute time again. We have reset things at nil-nil. But it looks like we're going to see Na'Vi have full control again. 14 to 12 in levels. They should be able to get this one with these. Yep, uh, level 13 talents will be available for... Uh for Acer by the time they go to fight this tribute, but tribute's already gone, so they're just backing up once again, waiting for their opportunity. Yeah. Be clearing out these this easy camp in the top lane as he can do, running the standard echo pedal build, so he's able to clear the waves pretty effectively and clear out the stronger stuff with the help of that guitar hero talent. Navi all grouped up in the t in the mid lane are beginning to roll their way down, and steal this watchtower. And maybe put some pressure on in the bot lane. Now splitting up, just pushing it bot lane and mid lane. Whereas uh, Acer just trying to defend, but they can't go too aggressive, seeing as their main combo relies on everyone being grouped around Illidan, and everyone is basically avoiding Illidan like the plague. <laughs> yeah, you want to be careful, extremely careful around an Illidan. It is tribute time again. Navi still. They haven't given up a single tribute. Acer haven't been able to get in there just yet. As Na'Vi now looking to grab their fifth of the game. They are about to hit level 16 as well. And have that talent advantage that they oh so enjoyed for quite a while in this game. But they won't be able to get it just yet. They need Brightwing to soak bot lane a little bit more. Who of course can TP in. It's coming in on Cilium. Metamorphs is going into the back line there. With the Divine Shield and the Tasta Shield. Swimpy taking a lot of damage there. The Apocalypse and Starfall coming out. It is going to be ETC oh first before him. Blow your brain around. falls as well. So much damage coming out from Cilium Strafe as well. Zypha goes down. Just Nasty and Draka left now. Trying to use Mines to get some slows off. Draka falls now. It's just Nasty using the Napalm. Trying to deter this chase. But... Breeze has mounted up, as has Eternal. Oh, Nasty getting yeah. slowed, and there it is. The 5 for 1 exchange there in favour of Na'Vi. Absolutely beautiful. And the second, second Illidan was separate from his team. Instantly, they turned around, they dropped the Cold Embrace, they dropped the Envenom, they dropped the Polymorph, which didn't have Critterize at the time, but they are in fact running the Critterize, so they are in fact running the triple vulnerable composition, which is pretty cool. But that was just so much damage coming out at once what Dayla did. He just went down so quickly. Yep, even with the Divine Shield and the ta uh, Shield from Tasta on him, he just, as you said, fell so, so quickly. And once that was down, then BKB fell because he was so far forward with no support because it had all been used to try and keep the Tasta alive. Yep, the Illidan survived so long in that fight, but once the Divine Shield's gone... He is very vulnerable to everything, as you saw there. Ufa can only heal you so much, as opposed to the Rhaegar, who is just giving you the second help. Well, even a Ancestral Heal, I don't think, would have helped yeah. Illidan there. That was damage was fast and damn, and high enough to just wipe him out. And in comes the engagement from Breeze. Zypho does get Apocalypse, but he's able to use his uh, Dimensional Shift to get out. But he also got Divine Shielded at the same time, so the Divine Shield gets completely wasted. And Breeze using the Golem to tackle his way back to the right side with his team. In comes the Illidan, but once again separated out. Where's the Polymorph? Need to engage upon him. Here comes the stage dive, and the Golem is now available. Everyone's fighting over the circle. BKB's in here, and he knocks everyone else out, but Shrimpy is the last guy in there. There's the Wailing Arrow. That silences everyone, and Na'Vi are taking this fight. Zypho, dimensional shifting, but he doesn't have his heal. He's turning around, but it's not enough, and he will go down, and Na'Vi take this fight in a four, in a uh, four, in a five, five, five for, for three. Two. 
Uh, sorry, five for two, yes. Five for two, yeah. But hey, back-to-back -back aces for Na'Vi here. They're going to get a curse off this as well and probably look to take away the enemy easy camp here and get an even greater push off in this bot lane with the boss. Yeah, they just they can do whatever they want here. With five members down, they're probably going to be able to get at least two keeps off of this by the time this curse is over. They're already going for the first keep. Gollum already starting on that bottom tap on that bottom gate, so that will be helping them push the bottom attack. keep. Core's actually already under attack by something. I'm not sure what hit it there. No, that's just the uh, that's the little sound bug we have right now in the game. Okay, fair enough. Wonderful. It's good to know that is this Illidan though. Wants to try and get the counter. There's the uh, Banshee Whale over the wall and the Emerald Wind to disengage. So it looks like we're actually only going to see one keep go down for now. But the Golem is going to try and make that difference. Still 25 seconds left on its duration. Already started on the keep. Na'Vi, though, just going to let that be a distraction. Looks like they're getting ready to head up to the top boss and take that as well. And bottom uh, top keep is uh, taking a lot of damage from those minions. Bot keep looking to fall here as well. They just can't get the damage down, even shielding it. It's going to go down. Top keep, they can just get this boss and push potentially for the end here. They're going to be 20 after it as well. Yep, and uh, the top keep is now unstunned thanks to the curse running out. But the minions are so spread out, the BKB can't deal with them. Even with his echo pedal, he's oh. almost got it. And One more. Oh my god, just saves 64. it 64 health. But uh, there's a golem now. It's probably going to die. <laughs> And Navi, yeah, Navi, fire. group it up, and down it goes to the uh, Kill fire stomp out of fire. Kill it with fire stomp. And we're going to see Navi rolling in here with the boss, like you said. They're looking for an end here. There's another tower here with 38 health. The I'm not sure what that went down to, but it went out of something. And yep. we're seeing Navi rolling in here. Looking for the opportunity. There's the bolt out of Breeze onto Nasty. Nasty gets annihilated. BKB dives in but doesn't actually land anyone. Wailing Arrow takes him out. Blow your brain. Gets polymorphed and he gets wiped out as well. There's the GG. Zypho separated. He has the dimensional shift but it's not going to be enough. And down he goes. Another almost full wipe apart from Draker. And that is going to be 1-0 to Na'Vi in this best of three series. It will indeed. They haven't dropped a single map so far in tonight's tournament. They are having at least one more game here against Team Acer in this best of three series. But again, their early game wasn't the best. They fell behind a little bit. But then again, their team fights, they had back-to-back -back aces there. So much map control as well. And it really did show. And I'm pretty sure that's, that's how they came through for that one. In, let's switch the overlay across. As on the left-hand side... We have Team Acer, we have Blue Your Brain on the Tarande, Nasty on the Jaina, BKB on the ETC, Zypher on the Zagara, and Draka having a few little issues there on the Uther. And on the right hand side, in the Red Trunks, team that's currently 1 0 up in games and series, it is going to be Na'Vi. And starting in the mid lane, there's going to be Breeze on the Diablo, Cilium is on the Valor, Eternal is on the Sylvanas, Schwimpy on the Zeratul, and Splendor on the Brightwing. I think I did someone twice, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe. But we're going to have a Tri-Lane bot to start things off. Of course, Splendor can just TP up uh, when needed. Tri-Lane versus Quad-Lane, by the looks of it. Oh, buddy. They're rolling in. It looks like they're just spreading creep, though. It doesn't look like they want to dive or go for a kill. But, uh... Yeah, it looks like uh, Drake is now just going to head back to the mid lane, just make sure he gets XP. But both teams setting up for a tri lane gag. Zypho is going to be the one to show. Scouts wrong the brush. wrong bush, but it's C Splendor. Splendor now trying to bait, and they're going in onto Zypho, but surprise! Here's the rest of Team A of uh, Team Acer here. Breeze taking a lot of damage. He's going to be the first blood. And the counter gank coming in out of uh, Acer there, going to give them the first blood. Yeah, that was a really nice, patient play there from Acer. Na'Vi got a little bit ahead of themselves. They do get that first kill. It's giving them about a quarter of a level lead in XP at the moment. But look at this. Blow your brain and BKB coming around again. They spot out Schwimpy. He's going to blink away from that one, however, and be pretty safe there. Splendor, though, he's going to have his work cut out for him up against Zypher here. Yep, yeah, gonna have a bit of trouble. In the top lane, though, we also have two of our very uh, high damage assassins gonna be dueling with each other. Eternal should, in theory, come out on top there as long as he can dodge out the skill shots of Nasty. He should be able to trade fairly efficiently. Breeze and Swimpy, though, preparing. They're gonna go for the engage, and Nasty is gonna go down so quickly, just in time for this temple to spawn. And this should give uh, Na'Vi pretty much easy control over this top temple. DKB, though, 
just going to hold this mid-temple for now. Yeah, he can't really do too much else, or at least Acer can't. They are going to try and roam up here, BKB, because they need to defend against this Sylvanas and Zeratul push. BKB is going to face Melt Shrimpy back into the team. Power slide past him. Nasty's trying to get some damage off. Just buys the team a few more seconds where Breeze has to step off the temple, but even so, it shouldn't be too much of a problem here. Yeah, Breeze actually taking quite a bit of damage on this temple. Mid-temple, though, still being held by Acer there. Blow your brain and Draker teaming up together to just beat up on Hatred these mercenaries. And Disney. Breeze has actually had to back out here because he got so low fighting those guardians. And Shrimpy Destroy. is going to be controlling this temple for now and getting the final shots from it. Yeah, Blow Your Brain did the same oh, in all. the mid... If Erdl went too aggressive oh. onto Nasty, but Swimpy is going to pick up the kill. And that is a one for one. It is indeed. As now, this bot lane still Splendor holding his own here. Blow Your Brain has come down. He's going to try and get the stun off here. Dodges out, does Splendor. But even so, he's forced back. And he can't even really back now. Because to TP back, he'd have to go on to Cilium and... Liam would have to lay down here for a bit and then they lose control elsewhere. But now BKB's back down here. Gonna catch Cilium out here. Really nice play from them. Dodging out the stun again, though. The Hunter Killer is on. Gets Protective Shielded. That's now Dracus come down as well, but he's going back towards the mid lane. Yeah, Dracus does. Oh, Zeratul went down somewhere. Zeratul. Uh, top lane, in fact. But yeah, Dracus has been doing that a lot. Where basically, action's been happening. He started to leave his lane, and then the action's over, and he just goes straight back into his lane again. Breeze. Does Breeze want to go on, on this? To Nasty. He wants no. it, but no, Nasty is too far away, and BKB is here, ready to try and engage. And they're actually going to try and chase the Breeze. Breeze tackling to a wall to try and escape, but now everyone is here. It comes right wing to try and defend. The stun does land. Double Blizzard does hit Breeze. And uh, that's why I did want to mention the build that we are seeing out of Nasty here. Taking the Conjurer's Pursuit for that extra mana regen on this Jaina, and also the Snowstorm ability will increase the radius of Blizzard, which is a bit out of the ordinary, but he's still taking the Frostbitten to increase the extra damage bonus. But what do you think of this build? I, it's a bit out of the ordinary, but I can see the logic behind it. Yeah, as can I, because once you get that more, of course, and as soon as they come out, people tend to just run away, and the snowstorm would guarantee that more people get hit by that because of the increased radius. Yep. But in this Ooh. bot lane, BKB looking to try and get in here. Ethernal is oh, able to get out. Breeze. <laughs> Going to be punting Zypher away there, essentially. Blow your brain, takes a bit of damage, gets slowed up, and now gets healed. Attention, though. Bot lane shrine up in five seconds. Splendor can, of course, just stay in the top for now. Soaking XP. No team is really going to hit level 10 here, I doubt, unless we have an extremely extended fight. Well, right wing's going to try and uh, change that, but there's no way she can soak enough. Zeratul also should in the top lane, in the mid lane, sorry, soaking some XP. So it doesn't look like Na'Vi wants to roll in to try and take this temple as of yet. Said we're going to let, uh, just going to let Acer take the first couple shots. But now in comes the teleport onto Sully and Breeze is already engaged. Eternal and Schwimpy doing the damage they can. Everyone is now here and the fight shall continue. They are rolling into the temple, and Zypho has been separated out here. He's trying to make a break for it, but in comes Splendor. Gets knocked into Zypho by the uh, by the temple guardian. BKB able to dash out to freedom. Breeze being dropped low. So is Cilia. Breeze goes down. Cilia may actually escape. Swimpy going on to Blow Your Brain, who was going very greedy onto Cilia there. Blow Your Brain is able to escape. Zypho comes in with a hunter killer to try and zone out Swimpy. BKB going to come in as well. Swimpy having to dive out, but Eternal going to suffer here. He will go down. And now, Cillian and Splendor are trapped at that blizzard. There's the logic. Absolutely annihilating Brightwing there. And Swimpy, the only one to escape. Diablo is back, but there's no way they're going to take this temple. And we're going to see Aeson now start taking this boss. We are so the new radius of blizzard is essentially the same size as one of the entrances to that bot shrine. Yep, that works out pretty well. Nasty to getting a bit of harass from Swimpy. Swimpy blinking out again. Breeze is here. He doesn't have his heroic though, so them diving into this Splendor's here as well. If they had level 10, they might be able to dive in an Emerald Twin. Breeze is going in though. They're not giving themselves out of fight. You Fernals here as well, but the boss has not yet been taken. Now it goes down as Breeze does die. The Devouring Maw goes down into Splendor as well. He will go down. And going in without those level 10s was not a wise move. Shrimpy popping his first day, but Stage Dive comes in. BKB gonna stun him down. And that is a lot of kills. Another three kills on top of what they already had going over to Team uh, Acer here. Has destroyed a yeah, Team Acer looking really strong here, it seems. Cilium now having to deal with this boss. 
it will most likely get this tower, but that will probably be all it gets because Selim can, of course, micro his way back using the auto attacks. He has Siren attacks as well if he would like to activate them. Uh, those are up. It wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Splendor's here now to try and push them back as well. Eternal, though, you might be a little bit caught out there. Sunshine is able to escape that one, though, as these... Uh, Hard Knight Camp is going to go into the hands of Acer. And Na'Vi haven't really had great control of their own mercenaries this game. Yeah, but they do, however, now have their heroics. So now they can begin to fight if they wish to. We have the Apocalypse. We have the Emerald Wind, which they could have really used in that last fight. Might have been a completely different fight to be able to do it. May have even been able to steal the boss. Strafe being taken by Valor. Wailing Arrow, of course, and the Void Prism. Yep, so already you can see the uh, combos that can be set up here. You've got the VP into APOC into Wailing Arrow. That's uh, that's going to be pretty nasty. See what I did there? Yeah, I like it. Uh, issue <laughs> is, though, from the side of Na'Vi, they currently have a zero stack zero tool on their team. And despite the amount of squishies on the side of Acer, it's not been able to really get its stacks going. Blender! Ooh. Having to use the Emerald Wind already just to force the engage back. Yeah, with no he... Uber Rockstar yet, not level 13, yeah. we're not going to see Acer continue the chase. And uh, Breeze, actually just going to chill in the top lane and take control of this temple, and they're just going to give the bottom temple over to Acer. Acer, beginning to make their way up, though they're not going to be as forgiving. Already pushing this bot lane, putting pressure on there, and chasing Splendor back, and putting some pressure on in the mid lane to help them take this. Oh, blow your brain. Is uh, going to help push this bot lane, but Zeratul is behind them. There Nasty. could be a good VP off here. Cilium's come down as well. There's an easy three-man VP there. They're going for the engage first, though. And there's the strafe going down and dodges the devouring more. But there's the VP. And Apocalypse Boom. has on two. Blow your brain, able to sprint out. But Zypho will go down. Nasty may join him, but Zeratul was taken out there. Cilium able to vault in and take out the uh, Jaina as well. It's just below your brain who's able to escape, who's also able to sprint out of that Apocalypse. But... Not bad, and that temple was not continuing to be taken. Dracula and Blow Your Brain are now going to move in and continue to take this, but Infernal and Cilium are on the way, and that might force them to get out. And Dracula using the uh, the Temple Guardian there as an escape rope to push him out of that temple. I honestly feel as if the VP should have come down while they were still on the bridge. Yeah, as, to give as time to, for, for Valor engage, and the Apocalypse to, to set up. Yeah, allow Cilium to set up, then the APOC come down, because Cilium essentially wasted about a quarter of the duration of Strafe. But hey-ho. I, th I think it was way less than a quarter, but it definitely was less than Ideal Breeze. Getting yeah. stunned from Blow Your Brain from a what, from quite a distance away. But yeah, the, the fact that he missed out on those couple extra shots from Strafe wasn't ideal. They were still able to get a couple kills, but yeah, a little bit wonky from Zeratul uh, there. I yeah. think it could have been a little better. Yeah. Losing the Zeratul kill as well was a little bit sloppy from... Uh, yeah, Ver Zeratul should have probably backed out after using that Void Prism. He was already quite low. Instead, he went in front of the enemy team and yeah. basically became the instant target the second that ended. Yeah, there was the option to just get the VP down while they were stacked or then chase. And then I think he, in fact, blink VP'd, he did. which meant that obviously he had no escape. Yeah, but he could have run backwards instead of running forwards. Yeah. He still had the op he still had a uh, yeah. a way to go. Shrimpy. But even so, it's just Jane it's, first. Uh, yeah, Shrimpy chilling in this mid lane, looking maybe for a pick, but there's a lot of people here. He's not going to get anything. Cilium and Breeze, looking at this watchtower, looks like they're going to try and take it. BKB is here, but not going to take the risk. He doesn't know who's there. Right wing, on the run to the bot lane, going to TP out, but the Moor's going to cancel it. You ain't getting out of here, Sunshine. They're going to group up, and uh, this is probably going to be Splendor going down. Down he goes, stun combo, and he gets wiped. BKB in the top lane, though. They need to get some CC on him. Breeze don't use it all just yet, or they can burst him down. Yeah, and uh, is a this ETC. is the one disadvantage one. of the split pushes. <laughs> yeah. You may be able to split push for XP, but if you're caught out, you are on your own. Shrimpy, gonna solo this middle lane fort and take that down for uh, Team Na'Vi here. He will indeed. It's now it's shrine time yet again here. 25 seconds until this mid shrine activates. As we're going to see Team Acer go towards their own hard camp. And again, Na'Vi, they were behind in the early game. They took a few dodgy fights in that bot shrine. But now they've got this XP lead. And this is where they'll probably start winning team fights from here on out in the late game. Yeah, Na'Vi putting on a good show at the moment. After, Like you said, after that early game, looking a bit wonky. 
Northern Exposure, once again, being taken by... Sorry, it's Acer who took Northern Exposure this time. Yep. Going for that vu- that second vulnerable once again. These teams really liking their vulnerable spells. If only ETC had taken yep. Mosh Pit, could a- they could actually run another. But probably best that they aren't. We do also have the Cold Embrace, so many vulnerables and the Critterize in this game. Mid-Temple being fought over. Na'Vi currently have control of it, but Acer are all here, and Brightwing has yet to teleport in, so this could be Acer's chance to engage. In comes Brightwing now, so the numbers are going to be even. Zypho getting dropped very low. Shrimpy's not giving up on this. He's going to continue to chase, and there's the two-man Void Prison. BKB gets in there, though. He's going to survive, and Apocalypse Wailing Arrow combo goes down. Breeze gets moored, and Draker having to Divine Shield him out, but ETC and Jaina have already gone down. Draker will go down to oh. the Singularity Spike 2, and now it is just Zagara on the run. She's being chased down, and Will a s- nope, never mind. Yeah, There's no, Shrimpy. Shrimpy. <laughs> and can Shrimpy. they push for the win here? I think they, I probably think they can. can. 30 seconds. seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds for most people to be up. They're going to push this down. And with Sylvanas, they're going to have no trouble with this keep. They're just going to push straight through this. And uh, yeah, this looks like it might just be GG. It's going to be up to ETC when he respawns. And yeah. if he has the time, five seconds till he's up. But the core is already on about three quarters health. And yeah, it's going to be GG. Yep, Na'Vi really showing their dominance here again behind in the early game, but they take that one team fight where they get the ace. That's a cool freeze. That is a very cool freeze. <laughs> or is it a cool breeze? Eh, but a Be fair, I could really do with a cool breeze coming through my window I, I would love a cool breeze. I'm, I've clouded over a bit, but it's still it, now it's just turned to humid rather than hot. Yeah. Yeah, it's that horrible humid weather. But either, even so, Na'Vi showing us why they got picked up by the powerhouse of the... Uh, CIS organization has a really nice play from them. 13 minute win there. They take the series 2 0.